the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Today is a day of great joy, great joy because we come before the Lord with hearts filled with gratitude for this particular event. We will ordain two transitional deacons for our diocese, and we ask God's blessings upon them as they enter into this year of ministry uh, in a special way and as they continue their journey to priesthood. We are grateful to so many who have brought them to this point, families, parishes, various uh, uh, opportunities that have crossed their path in terms of ministry, and certainly the seminaries that have prepared them and brought them to this day. We are grateful to God, grateful to you for saying yes. As we enter into this celebration this day, we spend a few moments recognizing our failures to love as God invites us to love. And so we begin by asking forgiveness taking a moment knowing that our God is filled with compassionness, gentleness, and mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have taught the ministers of your church to seek not to be served, but to serve their brothers and sisters, Grant, we pray, that these your servants, whom you graciously choose today for the office of deacon, may be effective in action, gentle in ministry, and constant in prayer. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus went around to all the towns and villages, 
teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and curing every disease and illness. At the sight of the crowds, his heart was moved with pity for them, because they were troubled and abandoned, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Let those who are to be ordained deacons come forward. Roger James Morgan. Present. Richard Charles Wilson. Present. Most Reverend Father, Holy Mother Church asks you to ordain these men, our brothers, to the responsibility of the diaconate. Do you know them to be worthy? After incurring inquiry among the Christian people, and upon the recommendation of those responsible, I testify that they have been found worthy. Relying on the help of the Lord God and our Savior Jesus Christ, we choose these, our brothers, for the order of the diaconate. <laughs> My dear brothers and sisters, since these are sons and brothers who are your relatives and friends, are now to be advanced to the order of deacons, Consider carefully the nature of the rank in the church to which they are about to be raised. Strengthened by the gift of the Holy Spirit, they will help the bishop and his priests in the ministry of the word, of the altar, and of charity, showing themselves to be servants to all. As ministers of the altar, they will proclaim the gospel. and prepare the sacrifice and distribute the Lord's body and blood to the faithful. Furthermore, it will be their duty at the bishop's direction to exhort believers and unbelievers alike and to instruct them in holy doctrine. They will preside over public prayer, administer baptism, assist at and bless marriages, bring viaticum to the dying and conduct funeral rites consecrated by the laying on of hands that comes down to us from the apostles and bound more closely to the service of the altar, they will perform works of charity in the name of the bishop or the pastor. With the help of God, they are to go about all these duties in such a way that you will recognize them as disciples of him who came not to be served, but to serve. Now, my dear brothers, you are to be raised to the order of the diaconate. The Lord has set an example that just as he himself has done, you also should do. As deacons, that is, as ministers of Jesus Christ, who came among his disciples as one who served, do the will of God from the heart. Serve the people in love and joy as you would the Lord. Since no one can serve two masters, look upon all defilement and avarice as serving false gods. My dear brothers, our scripture readings today speak very clearly of the fact that the role of the deacon is one of service. Both our first reading from the book of Numbers and our scripture from the Acts of the Apostles speak of designating someone to be responsible for meeting some very practical needs of the people. The Levites were called to maintain the worship space of the community. And the apostles recognized the personal needs of those in the community and selected men of good repute to serve those needs, especially the needs of those whose life had become a struggle. The service to which you as deacons are called is to be guided by a spirit of compassion, that sense of longing for the presence of God that so many in our contemporary society long for. Our gospel passage today tells us that Jesus was moved by the troubled hearts and sense of abandonment 
in the lives of the many people he encountered. He asked his disciples to pray for more laborers in the vineyard so that the people's needs may be met. That same sense of abandonment exists in the hearts of many today. And the need for more laborers to proclaim the joy of the gospel is still our prayer. You know what lies in the hearts of so many people and how difficult the struggle of just going day by day is for many. It's our task to reach out. It's our task to point to the presence of the Lord in their lives so that they might be lifted up, might be raised up, might see a sense of hope amidst a sense of such despair that the world around them may dictate to them. Roger, Richard, be gracious in your response to the call of the Lord. Reach out to God's people in love and compassion. Allow the presence of Jesus instilled in your heart this day in a special and unique way to touch the hearts of those whose lives desperately need the healing touch of the Lord Jesus. Remember, my brothers, that this ministry is not about you. Rather, it is a response that you offer to the Lord. And indeed, it must always be all about him. Your ministry as a deacon during this next year is not simply a step toward priesthood. It is an opportunity to bring hope and love to those who are in need. Pray well. Work well in collaboration with others who are devoted to, to ministry. And trust that the Lord God will continually offer you his grace so that you may respond well to the challenges you will encounter. Since by your own free choice you present yourselves for the order of the diaconate, we know that you are men of good reputation and you are called to that. You are filled with wisdom in the Holy Spirit as were those once chosen by the apostles for the ministry of charity. You will exercise your ministry committed to the celibate state. Know that celibacy is both a sign of pastoral charity and an inspiration to it, as well as a source of spiritual fruitfulness in the world. Compelled by the sincere love of Christ the Lord and embracing this state with total dedication, you will cling to Christ more easily with an undivided heart. You will free yourselves more completely for the service of God and man, and minister more effectively in the works of spiritual rebirth. Firmly rooted and grounded in faith, you must show yourselves chaste and beyond reproach before God and God's people, as is proper for the ministers of Christ and of the stewards of God's mysteries. Never allow yourselves to be turned away from the hope offered by the gospel. Now you are not only hearers of this gospel, but you are now going to become its ministers. Holding the mystery of faith with a clear conscience, express by your actions the word of God which your lips proclaim, so that the Christian people brought to life by the Spirit may be a pure offering accepted by God. Then on the last day, when you go out to meet the Lord, you will be able to hear him say, well done good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of your Lord. Roger, Richard, before you enter the order of diaconate, you must declare before the people your intention to undertake this office. And so I ask, do you resolve to be consecrated for the church's ministry by the laying on of my hands and the gift of the Holy Spirit? I do. Do you resolve to discharge the office of deacon with humble charity in order to assist the priestly order and to benefit the Christian people. I do. do you resolve to hold fast to the mystery of faith with a clear conscience, as the apostle urges, and to proclaim this faith in word and deed according to the gospel and the church's tradition? I do. You are prepared to embrace the celibate state. Do you resolve to keep forever this commitment as a sign of your dedication to Christ the Lord for the sake of the kingdom of heaven in the service of God and God's people? I do. Do you resolve to maintain and deepen the spirit of prayer that is
proper to your way of life, and in keeping with this spirit and what is required of you to celebrate faithfully the liturgy of the hours with and for the people of God, and indeed for the whole world. I do. Do you resolve to conform your way of life always to the example of Christ, of whose body and blood you are ministers at the altar? I do with the help of God. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. My dear people, let us pray that God, the all-powerful Father, will mercifully pour out the grace of his blessing on these, his servants, whom in his kindness he raises to the sacred order of the diaconate. Lord God, mercifully hear our prayers and graciously accompany with your help what we undertake by virtue of our office. Sanctify by your blessing these men we present, for in our judgment we believe them worthy to exercise sacred ministries. Through Christ our Lord. Draw near, we pray, almighty God, giver of every grace, who apportion every order and assign every office, who remain unchanged but make all things new. In your eternal providence, you make provision for every age as you order all creation through him who is your word, your power, and your wisdom, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. You grant that the church, his body, adorned with manifold heavenly graces, drawn together in the diversity of its members, and united by a wondrous bond through the Holy Spirit, should grow and spread forth to build up a new temple. And as once you chose the sons of Levi to minister in the former tabernacle, so now you establish three ranks of ministers in their sacred offices to serve in your name. And so, in the first days of your church, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, your son's apostles appointed seven men of good repute to assist them in the daily ministry, that they might devote themselves more fully to prayer and preaching of the word. By prayer and the laying on of hands, they entrusted to those chosen men the ministry of serving at table. We beseech you, Lord, look with favor on these servants of yours, who will minister at your holy altar, and whom we now humbly dedicate to the office of deacon. Send forth upon them, Lord, we pray, the Holy Spirit, so that they may be strengthened by the gift of your sevenfold grace for the faithful carrying out of the work of the ministry. May there abound in them every gospel virtue, unfeigned love, concern for the sick and the poor, unassuming authority, the purity of innocence, and the observance of spiritual discipline. May your commandments shine forth in their conduct so that by the example of their way of life they may inspire the imitation of your holy people. In offering the witness of a clear conscience, may they remain strong and steadfast in Christ so that by imitating on earth your Son, who came not to be served but to serve, they may be found worthy to reign in heaven with him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you now are. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Peace be with you, Roger. And with your spirit. Peace, Richard. God with your spirit.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours might be found acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Holy Father, whose Son chose to wash the disciples' feet, and so set us an example, accept, we pray, the oblations of our service, and grant that offering ourselves as a spiritual sacrifice, we may be filled with the spirit of humility and zeal, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son high priest of the new and eternal covenant and by your wondrous design were pleased to decree that many ministries be exercised in the church. For Christ not only adorns with a royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. He chooses them to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word and strengthen them with the sacraments as they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exultation we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and giving you thanks he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, and the peace and salvation of all the world. Please to confirm the faith and charity in your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, these your servants who have been ordained today as ministers for the church and all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom we have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Guard your hearted brothers and sisters, and to all who please you and their passing in this life, give kind of penance to your kingdom. They were those to enjoy whatever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, for the rule you bestow on the world. All. Through him, with him, in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to enter under my roof. Only say the word, my soul shall be healed. Grant, O Lord, to your servants, whom you have replenished with heavenly food and drink, that for the sake of your glory and the salvation of believers, they may be found faithful as ministers of the gospel, of the sacraments, and of charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated just for a moment. I'd certainly like to offer uh, some words of thanks, first of all, to the families of, of, of Richard and Roger. Certainly the, um, the support and affirmation of family is so important. Uh, secondly, our lives are, are really built up and supported by the lives of so many people who cross our paths. And uh, certainly their lives and their road uh, to this day and uh, their road that continues to next year at this time is, is due in large, large factor to the so many people who, who support and affirm them. So I thank you uh, for that. Uh, to the parish of St. Mary in Greenville, uh, uh, Roger's supporting parish, to the parish of St. Joseph in Anderson, um, uh, Richard's uh, supporting parish. <laughs> Your fan club is here. <laughs> Many, many thanks. Uh, again, uh, support and affirmation is so important if we are going to be able to minister together and build up the kingdom of God here on this earth. Many thanks uh, to uh, the Seminary of St. Mary in, in Houston and uh, certainly John the 23rd Seminary where you started your, your career. I'm not even sure where you started. I think I forget. At Mount St. Mary's. Okay, so. Everybody started someplace else, but wound up together in St. Mary's in Houston. Thanks very, very much to uh, those seminaries and their faculties who have given so much for the formation 
of, of these men for this day. Certainly, thanks to the parish of St. Joseph here, its choir, and all who have prepared this liturgy, it is uh, certainly uh, always a pleasure to be here in this church. Uh, we've made this sort of the diaconate church. This is where we ordain deacons. Uh, next year, you'll be down in Charleston uh, with us. I ask you very sincerely, though, remember that they have another year of preparation for uh, to be open to the gift of priesthood. And uh, certainly, uh, the presence of so many priests here today is, is certainly an affirmation of their support and their affirmation of the path that these men are taking. We need your prayers, though. They need your prayers and your support during this last year of formation for priesthood. And uh, certainly, we hope to see you all in, in Charleston uh, next year as we ordain them priests. I'm getting a little better. Y'all come to Charleston. <laughs> The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. <laughs>